Hey guys, it's Sabato Productions, and welcome to the episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies Turnabout Countdown. In the last episode, well, we finished off day one. And we started day two just, you know, get out, get through the... Just the basic, you no, know, let's just talking and, you know, all that stuff. And now it's time to go to the court and get ready to rumble. You bet. Alright, let's do this. With everything that happened with Apollo, I didn't have time for a proper investigation. I can't let that stop me, though. I'll have to get this right for Miss Wood's sake and my Apollo's, too. December 18, 9.50 a.m., District Court. Courtroom number 5. It's true. Court is now in session. All right. Court will now reconvene from the trial of Juniper Woods. The prosecution's ready, Your Honor. The defendant is also ready. Oh, the defense is also ready, Your Honor. Well, well then, I believe I instructed our prosecution to further their investigation. Were you able to locate the remote switch in question? Uh, I'm afraid the remote switch is still missing, Your Honor. I must say, I'm disappointed, Mr. Payne. Not angry, just disappointed. I, I, I apologize, Your Honor. Aha! Looks like the prosecution's just as unprepared as I am. There is a separate matter, however, that I would like to bring up during this trial. A separate matter, you say? And what might that be? I assume that you're aware of another incident that occurred during yesterday's trial. Speaking of, of course, the assault on Mr. Justice in the ruins of courtroom number four. Oh no, why is he bringing that up? Oh, what a truly harrowing experience it must have been. Poor Mr. Justice. At the time of the attack, Mr. Justice was not alone. He was with the defendant, Miss Juniper Woods. He isn't going where I think he's going with this. Is he? The prosecution wishes in to indict Miss Woods on the charge of Mr. Justice's assault. Now that is unfair. Order, order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the incident under deliberation here is the courtroom bounding. The assault of Mr. Justice has nothing to do with this trial. Ah, but I believe there's a complete connection to this case of Mr. Justice's assault. Please take a moment to consider these facts. Both events occurred in courtroom number four. The location in courtroom number four where the unconscious Mr. Justice was discovered, and as you can see, is quite close to where Detective Arms' body was found. Courtroom number four diagram added to the court record. The question is, why did the culprit feel the need to maliciously attack Mr. Justice? Why indeed? Why do you believe their motive to be Mr. Payne? I believe Mr. Justice found something in that courtroom while Miss Woods was with him. Evidence that would finger her as the perpetrator of the bombing. You managed to find some indiscriminating evidence? Precisely. And so I, I surmise that the defendant picked up a piece of rubble and hit Miss, Mr. Justice on the back of the head in order to silence him. Objection? Judy would never do such a thing. She was devastated when she found out Apollo hurt like that. Miss Sykes, please control your outbursts. Yeah, please, Athena. Jeez. Ahem. So as the prosecutions believe that by deliberating Mr. Justice's assault, that we will draw even closer to the truth of the courtroom bombing itself. Very well. Miss Woods is hereby officially indicated, indicted in the charge of assaulting Mr. Justice. What? Why are you listening to Mr. Toupee over there? Yeah, that's true. Mr. Toupee it makes him look like an idiot. There's not that time anymore. Although, considering our conver conversation yesterday, I think Apollo might have figured something out. Hmm. I wonder what it was. He told me I better go look for evidence to clean your name, Juniper. Maybe the two incidents really are related after all. I'd like to start by hearing from the defendant herself. Very well, Bailiff. Please bring Miss Miss Woods to the witness stand. I, I'm sorry. I can't seem to stop. <sighs> Miss Woods. I guess she's still really upset about Apollo. Miss Woods, you went to the ruins of courtroom number four with Mr. Justice, did you not? Yes, I did. Good, good. If you would, then please testify about what happened to the court. Witness testimony. 
During the trial yesterday, I was overcome by a fit of coughing. Apollo stayed with me, and we went to the courtroom ruins together. But then I was called back to the courtroom to give testimony. Apollo insisted on staying behind in courtroom number four. I swear I didn't tag Apollo. Why would I ever hurt such a kind person? So, Mr. Justice stayed by your side while you're feeling unwell. What an admirable young man. I thought his loud voice was only an outstanding feature. He may look like a little imp at times, but Apollo could be really nice, too. I hope she didn't, she didn't hurt her worst backhanding that one out. But one has to wonder, why did Mr. Justice stay behind in the ruins? I think Apollo might have figured something out. Something? What kind of something? Something to do with the courtroom bombing kind of something, I think. Oh ho! New evidence for the case, was it? That's a very kind of something indeed. We don't know if that's good or not. I believe so. I've been looking for, more, for some evidence when I was called away. Objection! Just as I thought, there's a connection between the two incidents. But the defendant has told a very big lie, Your Honor. What lie is that? What she learned, Mr. Justice, would be looking for the evidence. She attacked him. She attacked him to give herself the chance to destroy that evidence. What? No! no. I, I never... Objection! Miss Woods repaid Mr. Justice's kindness with violence. We found this proof of foul deed here in the courtroom ruins. Stop badgering the witness. What on earth? Do you see it? There in front of Mr. Justice's right hand? The witness, the message, he left us. It's written in blood. W-O-O-D-S. Woods. Whoa, why is that? That's right, Your Honor. It says Woods in capital letters. What? I submit that Mr. Justice led us with the name of his attacker before he fainted. Oh, the usual write down the name on the floor with blood. And yeah, that, yeah, that seems to happen in every case. It always turns out to be the wrong thing that these prosecutors always assume. So, we'll see about that. Apollo's assault photo added to the court record. No, that can't be true. Why would Apollo write my name? Maybe that's his crush. <gasps> Maybe he has a crush on Juniper. Don't tell. Mr. Wright, the nerve of him leaving that message. Why would he do that? Hey, don't take it out on me. I don't understand it any more than you do. It's obviously the crush. I mean, come on. When we discovered Apollo yesterday. Apollo. No, no. Ah! Okay, I can't do a screaming girl voice. I'm sorry. We can't even have a chance to rush over to him. As soon as securities heard Athena scream, they ran and cordoned off the area. After that, they were in the courtroom number four with Apollo the whole time. We couldn't investigate anything ourselves, we had to leave everything to police. Sure, I never thought they would have found some bloody writing there. No then, please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Okay, let's see, cross-examination. Alone with Apollo. Okay, during the trial yesterday, I was overcome by a fit of coughing. Went to the courtroom ruins together. Hold it! Why exactly did you go to the courtroom ruins? Well, we looked look at my medicine to stop my coughing. Your medicine? Why would your medicine be in courtroom number four? Well, I dropped it in the heart of the heat in the moment. Bone Rat Briny, he was keeping my medicine safe for me. He has a little compartment that I could put things in, you see? And Phony Fanti has the same kind of pocket. That's where the po where the bomb was inserted. I had to put my medicine for my coughing fit in... Uh, well, I put... Hey, had put my medicine for my coughing fits inside Bum Rap Riney. And I told Apollo about it. He said he'd go help me look for him. There was so much rubble in there, I was worried, but... There was no rubble or anything found in the witness stand. So when we got inside, Apollo went straight there. And started looking for my Riney in that area. It was so nice of him to do that, I'm in spite of all things. Apollo so strong, kind, just like the trees of the forest. The way he makes him sound like you would think Apollo is sort of something like an ancient god. Oh, wait... Aha! <laughs> hmm, so that's why you went to the ruins, I see. That seems to be quite important. Please add that to your testimony, Miss Woods. Alright. I think... Okay, so let's see. Apollo started looking for bum rap riding near the witness stand, but there's no rubble. Yeah, that contradicts something. And it's that new Objection. diagram. Objection! So we started the search while the witness stand, you say? That's right, I guess he wanted to start from the furthest point in the room, instead of being so brave and strong. But that's odd. Under the circumstances, he shouldn't have been capable of that. But he was! He still is! He might look like it, but he's really as brave and kind, too. 
No, that's not the point I'm finding fault with. Someone has a crush on Apollo. What are you claiming as something that no one should have been able to do? Oh, I don't think anyone could be more brave than they wanted to be, Mr. Wright. True, anyone can be brave and kind, but if you please take a look at this diagram. With a courtroom in this state, how is it possible to walk up to the witness stand? Aha! Uh -huh. Oh! Hmm, I see your point. The rumble blocks off the access to the area around the witness stand. Heh, <laughs> does such a tiny inconsistency even matter? Perhaps the witness is simply misremembering it. Ugh, great. Now I'm not sure if it matters. A real name doesn't make a mountain out of molehills, you know. But that's precisely what Mr. Wright does best. I call slander, Your Honor! So... Was it really impossible to approach the witness stand? I have to say, it's a bit hard to tell from the accuracy just from this diagram. Mr. Payne, do you have any other photos of the crime scene? Yeah, let me see, Your Honor. Ah, yes, I have one more. Here it is. I've, it's a more Polak version of the photo I presented before. Alright, so it looks like the saw photo is updated in the court record. Huh? What's that hunk of metal on wheels? Mr. Payne, is that metallic object in that photo, Mr. Tonitz? Bomb transport case? That's right. Is there some problem? Oh, yes. The transport case was there in courtroom number four when the bomb went off. It must have been there ever since. Oh, that's it? What, Miss Woods? I remembered something. Yes, I just realized. His position is different from before. His position? The position of what? Um, the position of the big metal thing. The bomb transport case? Yes. When Apollo when I went in there, it was a different place. When when the case in the photo was open space, it was easy to search the stand. I see. So where was the transport case when you and Miss Justice saw it? As I recall, it was more to the right. To the right. Then that means in that case the case was over there at the time of the Apollo's attack. Hmm. Who cares what the transport case was when? You know, the difference doesn't make. It has nothing to do with OBJECTION! Where the transport case has everything to do with this discussion. In fact, so important it's enough to turn the prosecution's argument on its ear. What? what Wow! That certainly sounds very relevant indeed. Now you sound just as thought as though the case was at time of the attack. Yes, Your Honor. The diagram represents the crime scene as shown as in photo. In this photo, the transport case at the time was just, was uh, wait, okay. Transfer Kate was at the time of the assault on Mr. Justice. Alright, I have this. The Palm's transport case was here at the time of Apollo's attack. Alright, let's do this. Okay, it's gonna be right there. Your Honor, I assert this is where the transport case was time at the assault. There? Hmm. Afraid I have the f fail to follow your- Aw, oh, crap. Oh yeah, that's right. I got it right. Dang it! Oh my gosh. I just didn't put it exactly on it. Wow, our first penalty in the game, and that was because I wasn't careful. It's actually, I'll just use the circle pad. Who's right here? There we go. Your Honor, I assume this is where the transfer case was at the time of the assault. But that's... Inconceivable! Miss Woods, was this where the transfer case was when you first saw it? Yes, that's where it was. Thank you, Miss Woods. I'm sure the Corps made is known an interesting fact about this position. The transport case covers the writing in blood. Exactly. The transport case was in that position at the time of the assault. Oh, wow, sorry. Almost had a hiccup. That no message could have been written there because the, the case was in the way. Which leads us to conclude, Mr. Justice couldn't have left that bloody writing. Objection. Why should we believe the defendant's claim that the case was in a different position? She's obviously lying. Objection. The fact that the case was moved after the assault of Mr. Justice is proved by more than Miss Woods' testimony alone. What? And where was this proof that you were talking about? Well, it's right here in the crime photo. Hmm. I'm kind of I'm keen to see this proof myself, Mr. Wright. Where this photo indicates that the transfer case was moved after the assault. Oh, it's right there, of course. Take that! Take that! Please take a look at the mark that runs over Miss Ju- Oh, uh, not Miss. Wow, he's a girl now. No, Mr. Justice's bandages here. I see. But what is it? The mark was made by one of those casters from the transport case carrying the bomb. And the case was moved right over its bandages. In other words, the transport case was originally to the right of Mr. Justice. Then, after Ms. Mr. Justice was assaulted, the transport case was moved. What? 
just as Miss Wood said, the case of covering the writing of at the time of the assault. Therefore, it is impossible for Mr. Justice to leave that message in blood. No! Oh yeah, we turned some stuff around. You did it, boss. It was a real nail-biter, but you pulled it off. Yup, that should bring down the pr prosecution's claim like a house of cards. Order, order in the court. Mr. Wright, that was a very clever detection. Aw, oh, it was nothing, your honor. You're a genius, though. Take that! Boss, I'm sensing a definite smug and braggy vibe coming off of you. Oh, sorry. Athena. Athena. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have just one more question, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. Mr. Justice didn't leave the message in blood. Then who did? Oh, crap, huh? What? What? <laughs> Oh, what? Well, well. Uh, looks like I should have taken that train of thought through the last station. <laughs> well, well. I heard a lot about this, so this is Mr. Wright's famous bluffing technique, is it? Ah, oh, this feeling it brings back memories of the old days, back when you carved out a name for yourself by bluffing your way through thick and thin. Gee, Mr. Wright, a judge kind of makes you sound no better than a two-bit con man. Oh, yeah, it's kind of true. You made your argument with such confidence, Mr. Wright, and I like to hear your answer with just much just as much confidence. Hey, until you until a judge asked the question, you didn't catch on either, Buster. What now, boss? <laughs> I hope you didn't bluff your way into a corner. Think, Phoenix, think, there must be a way through this. I have to dig my way through the truth somehow. Who could have written that message in blood? I would have to say someone else. If it wasn't Apollo, who could have left the bloody message? Alright, let's see, we got Apollo, Juniper, Candace Arm, the victim, Athena, Gaspin Payne. It's definitely Gaspin Payne. No, it's not. Ted Tonitz. I say it'd have to be the Candace Arm person. Take that. Take that! To be honest, I don't actually have any real proof of this. But I've come this far, there's no turning back now. Besides, Apollo, there's one more person who shed blood at this crime scene. A person who shed blood? You don't mean... Oh, but I do. I believe it was Candace Arm who left behind this message in blood. What? Yes, because think about it. Just well, Apollo Justice didn't have any. Well, didn't have that much blood, and Candace Arm really had a bunch of blood. So maybe she wasn't dead instantly. You never know. What? Detective Arm? Are you sure you know what you're doing here? Um, no, not really. Objection. What kind of ridiculous assertion is that? If you had said the attacker left a message to throw people off, it would have made sense. At first glance, that would seem to be the most reasonable explanation. However, Apollo didn't shed enough blood to write such an extensive me message. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, I see. Even though the blood makes it clear. Well, I mean, not the blood. The photo makes it clear that there wasn't enough blood to write all those letters. Mr. Justice did survive, so I suppose he didn't bleed very extensively in that case. But why would Detective Arm write the defendant's name? There's no connection between the two whatsoever. And I didn't know the, who the lady was who got killed. I admit the investigation didn't turn up any connection between the victim and the defendant. Then they, they had never even met each other. That that's very true. Well then, let's see. Then maybe the intended meaning of the message is not what it appears to be. The intended meaning? Not what it appears to be? Maybe yeah, the message wasn't intended to be Woods? Now that's real bluffing right there. Coming from you, that's quite a bold statement, Mr. Wright. You sure to assert that this bloody righty could have had some other meaning? Yeah, of course, Your Honor. I mean, like, for something I pulled off a wormhole actually could be true, right? <laughs> true bluffing, true bluffing. Yeah. Clearly says Woods, as anyone can plainly see, what other meaning could it possibly have? OBJECTION! But Candace Arm was a detective. Maybe Woods only means something to the police. Like the police scanner code, for example. Hmm. I didn't think of that. Heh <laughs> heh. You may have tricked his honor, but you'll never get the best of me. I don't think for studying on the weekends, as you might already guess. No, you already said that you took classes about being a gentleman. No, you are not a gentleman. So you are clearly lying here. And there is no such thing as radio code such as Woods in this state, dear right? Is, is that a fact? Heh <laughs> heh. Don't look at me. I know as much as you do about police codes. Enough of this. It was quite taken from the defense's new theory. But if they can't sub subtain it with anything, then I must end things here. No! Please wait, Your Honor. 
very well. But if you discuss this theory any further, I demand a plausible explanation. So, Mr. Wright, what is the true meaning of bloody writing? Uh, well, I believe it's... And no more stalling. And if you can come up with an answer quickly, then I'll declare this discussion officially over. Oh, I'm in trouble now. What other meaning could it have besides the obvious one? Maybe it means something in another language? Or maybe it's a code? And plus, code was read there. Thanks, think, Phoenix, you can do this. Which piece of evidence will tell us that the, world, the word woods really means? So if you look through the evidence, there's nothing really in here that has any words other than that that says guilty. But, there's a code on the transport case. Take that! Take that! The bomb transport case? I've had her enough here with your shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Take a look at the numbers on this case, Your Honor. L10015R. Doesn't this distinct string look vaguely familiar? L100. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, what could those numbers possibly have to do with this case at hand? Now, please take a look at the bloody writing shown in the crime photo. Oh, I think I see it. That a girl. That's the one on my side. It says Woods. Or do you think it says. You could say it's a horse of a different color, Your Honor. The first character isn't a W. It's actually an L and a 1. Next to, to our zeros. Oh, my goodness. Wow, good job, Your Honor. You finally noticed. The true meaning behind this buddy writing isn't Miss Wood's name. It's the number engraved on this bomb transport yes. case. Objection. What are you talking about? The next part doesn't make any sense. The number is a 1, but the buddy writing says D. Objection! But the number on the case in the body writing can be made to match up quite easily. This is how the numbers on the transport case can be made to match the body writing. Well, let's see. If you look at the court record, and you look at the body writing, it looks like we have to get rid of two lines. So let's get rid of two lines. Please erase the third downward stroke of the W, and then the curved part of the D. Wow! What you look at that? Lewis? Not Lewis, your honor. It's meant to be something red. It's not supposed to be red as a word. It's the number L10015. And if you take away the final R, it's exactly the same number that's on the bomb transport case. Objection. Yeah. Erase two lines and they match up, you say? Well, I could change anything into anything else by simply erasing two lines. Let me erase the two lines from your name. Would you like to be happy as Mr. Rye? Well, would you like that, Mr. Rye? Oh my gosh. The only right spelling is right. Okay. I'm doing pretty well here, and I think I've drawn the right conclusion. Detective Arms' real message to us is the bomb, tr bomb transport case number. Your Honor, the two lines were added by the real culprit to intentionally mislead people. What? The original message Detective Arm left was the transport case number, but whoever assaulted Apollo changed the message. If you're right, boss, then what do you suppose Detective Arm was trying to tell us? Good question. What does this number represent? Do you see this number here? That is my identification number. Candace Arm lost her life in that courtroom bond. Her dying message could only have been one purpose. No! Oh yes. T to tell us the name of the one who's responsible for the bombing. Well, why don't you keep that in suspense, Mr. Wright? Tell us who she was trying to name. Well, the culprit is a victim that to identify is none other than... Ted Tonit. The defense wishes to indict Ted Tonit on the charge of the courtroom bombing. Ted Tonit? Apparently, disabling bombs isn't Mr. Tonit's only specialty. Somehow, the victim must have realized that he was the bomber. So, when, he was, when she was caught in the blast, she left his blood. Transport case number is her dying message. She used Mr. Tonit's own ID number to finger him for the crime. Objection. Why would anyone go out of their way to write an ID number? Wouldn't they simply write the person's name? 
He's got a point here. What do you have to say to that, Mr. Wright? That only Detective Arm would know the answer to that, but let me allow you to offer a theory. Perhaps Detective Arm couldn't recall Mr. Tonnet's name in the heat of the moment. As I recall, the first meeting between the two, it was entirely possible that they would have been familiar with each other. Or maybe using the ID number was a way to hide the true meaning from the real culprit, thus lowering the odds that they would erase the bloody writing. Oh yeah, way to go, Athena. But no matter what the reason, the important thing is is the meaning behind her message, the fact that she wrote Mr. Tonnet's ID yes. number. OBJECTION! Now, just one moment here. There hasn't been any proof yet that indeed Detective Arm who wrote it. The bloody writing isn't found during the investigation after the blast, so if Detective Arm left a message, it would have been found at that time. OBJECTION! Naturally, Mr. Tonnet hid it before anyone could discover it, and there's a simple explanation for how he was able to do so. What? Mr. Tonnet was able to cover the message because he was the first to find the body. I was the first one on the scene after the explosion. I went there to ensure safety, but I ended up discovering a dead body. When Mr. Tonnet saw that the victim had written his ID number, he was using the bomb's transport case to cover up the bloody writing as a, st a stopgap measure. Oh, so the message in blood was under the transport case. He didn't have enough time to try and scrub away the writing. If he didn't report the body right away, he would look suspicious. So the letters lived to serve another function. When Mr. Tonnet used them in, in another incident. Oh, he sold up Mr. Justice. Exactly. Mr. Tonnet hit upon the plan to use the bloody writing for his own purposes, so he didn't clean it out anyway. Instead, he made it look like Mr. Justice wrote it by adding the two lines to the writing that Detective Arm left behind. He changed the meaning of the message! He made it look like Mr. Justice was accusing Miss Woods of the attack. So that means... The only person who could have altered this bloody writing was the courtroom bomber. And who was the same person that was assaulting Mr. Justice? And that person is Mr. Ted Taunt. Gah! Now we finally turned some things around. Order in the court. What do I say? Looks like we have to hear from the bomb specialist himself. Mr. Payne, please let Mr. Tonnet take the witness stand. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. That was great, Mr. Ray. Just, I'm just doing what I do best, which is flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Dismantling the case is yours. Do you think you can handle it? I look forward to seeing you try. Oh yeah, I can do this. I finally draw Mr. Tonnet back onto the witness stand. It looks like... You'll get your wish, Goggle Man. Now watch me take your lies apart. Mr. Tonnet, I'm afraid we have a few more questions for you. I understand the situation, Your Honor. I was keeping a close eye at the proceedings at, from the gallery. The allegations are all laughable. Objection! Objection. I wouldn't be laughing if I were you, Mr. Tonnet. The message in blood matches your ID number. The same ID number that is there on that bomb transport case. Such a far-fetched theory. Yes, I use Pokemon for a theory. No better than a tangled ball of wires. I have them untangled for you in no time at all. You were the first person at the scene after Detective Arm left your message in blood. You were the one who could have hidden the writing and used it again later. I see, double, but then let me ask you, do you have any proof that Detective Arm wrote that message? That's a very good question, well, do you, Mr. Wright? Well, the best way to prove that Detective Arm wrote that message is to, I guess, we'll just analyze the DNA of the blood. Can't do handwriting, that doesn't make any sense. Your Honor, I would request the DNA test be performed on the blood itself. Once we know whose it is, it'll be obvious as who wrote the message. Very well. Violet, please put in a request for a DNA test with the forensic for the fluorescent teams. Yes, Your Honor. It'll be some time before we have the results of the analysis. Until then, let's hear more from the witness. I would like nothing more, Your Honor. I want the court to hear how ridiculous the defense's theory is. It's time to pull some lies apart. After the explosion. I admit I was the first one on the scene after the explosion, but there was no bloody writing there at the time. Anyway, there is no way Detective Arm could have written it. 
She stuck her head in rubble and died near the courtroom entrance. She was too far away from where the bunny message was found. I already found the contradiction. It was really easy. So you're saying that the victim's body was nowhere near where the writing was? Precisely. It is plain as day that she could have not written it. It is true that the body was discovered near the entrance to the courtroom. Please have a look at this crime scene photo. As you can see, there is blood on the rubble near the victim's body. She must have died after hitting her head there. Courtroom bombing photo added to the court record. Hmm. I see. All right then, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examinate the witness. Do you have what it takes to take my invaluable testimony apart? Okay, cross-examination. Okay, let's see. So after the explosion, there's no way she could have written it. She struck her head on rubble. All right, look at this autopsy report. Oh, okay. Cause of death, trauma to back of head caused by impact with a flat object. Where, where she hit her head, is that a, a flat object? No, it's a pointed object. It's time to present. Let me see if I can get the microphone to work. Objection! Objection. Objection! Oh, you just have to do it normal. Okay. You are a terrible liar, Mr. Donut. Take a look at this autopsy specifically, the part about det Detective Arms. Head injury. Cause of death? Trauma to back of head caused by impact with a flat object. Yes, what about it? Now take a good look at the bloody piece of rubble. It's sharp and pointed. No, <laughs> Hey, you're right, boss. It is pointy. Just like your hair. That is odd, isn't it? What could be the meaning of this contradiction? I believe it means the victim did not hit her head on this piece of rubble. The blood stain you see is just another fabrication. Its purpose is to mislead us into thinking the victim, the victim died near the courtroom entrance. 